Danny watches a lot of television and movies. John does not. Listen in as she tells him about what she's watching and he tries to make sense of it all. Welcome to Watching My Stories with Danny and John. Hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. I'm Danny. And I'm John. And this is Watching My Stories. It is. And a Merry Christmas. Hopefully everyone had a Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We are a few days away from the end of 2020. Counting Thank down. God. Worst year of our lives. Worst year of everybody's lives. Eh. I think it's anonymous. It's anonymous? Unanimous. <laughs> um, yeah. So we said we were going to come back a week later because we knew there were a bunch of movies that we were going to watch. Mm-hmm. And we have, in okay. fact, done that. <laughs> we did. And um, so, there. so we're going to hit a bunch of movies. Mm-hmm. I've got a couple little TV things to talk <clears throat> about. And then we are going to discuss Harrison Ford in the Actors Corner. Still can't believe we haven't done them already. But yeah. Well, I'm not a huge fan. So that explains it. That explains it. it sure does. Um, OK, so we're going to jump in. So okay. we did. We watched a lot of movies over the last week. And yesterday I asked John um, out of all of them, what was your favorite? With my um, point being that whatever you said was your favorite was where we were going to start. And you said Jingle Jangle was your favorite out of all of these. So yes. we're going to start with that movie. So okay. this is Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. It's on Netflix. I talked about this a couple months ago when it first came out in November. Um, we watched this on Christmas Day. Yes, I think so. I, yeah, yeah, I think pretty we sure. Um, because... We needed something to watch and it wanted it to be Christmassy. And I love this movie so much. I definitely wanted you to um, give it a shot. Mm -hmm. So as I talked about before, this is a new Christmas story, a new Christmas musical. Um, Forrest Whitaker and Keegan-Michael Key and Anika Noni Rose and the wonderful girl Madeline Mills, who's just the whole spirit of the whole thing. This little girl is just wonderful amazing um so go ahead tell me why this was your favorite of all of them (laughs) well it's a combination really this was really good and it would have been my favorite of all of them if all the rest of them had been good too um but it was really easy this one stood head and shoulders over what you know the other ones we watched to me except for one yeah it was it was close um it was entertaining as heck it was a uh, it wasn't an original story I mean, we've seen it before, a form of it before. Um, hmm. I really disagree with that. I think it was completely original. The music was original. The whole steampunk fashion, you know. I I said the story, actually. Yeah, the the aesthetics were completely original. The, the, the style in which it was done was very original. We've seen an apprentice rip off uh, an inventor before and, um, <coughs> you know make it big and then remorse at the end so Hmm. i don't you know let's not get hung up in the minutia um it was it was great i will watch forrest whitaker do just about anything yeah um he's one of my all times and you know he's just a i just love his his demeanor and his personality and especially when he's acting um it was great he was the perfect uh pick for that i thought everybody in their roles was great um, I, of course, didn't know that Michael Keegan Key could sing, so was pleasantly surprised by that. You knew that, but <laughs> yeah. I didn't. So um, great performances by everybody. The story was great, uh, and, and especially the way it was done was great. Um, yeah. And the aesthetics, man, it was a gorgeous movie. I know. The costumes, the props, the, the co- toys. The colors. The, and, yeah. yeah. It, it, it was just and even the way like this when she when felicia rashad is first introducing and they have the little wooden what appears to be like Mm -hmm. puppetry and all that stuff it's just so cool Mm -hmm. i i Mm -hmm. you fall in love with it just on its own with that yeah they could have told the whole story like that and that would have been enthralled right oh yeah (laughs) Yeah. that would have been interesting yeah but yeah um and and it's you know it has some cgi in it uh it's very well done very believable um the songs oh my god the music is just fantastic especially the big dance numbers yeah um just i really want to listen to the soundtrack uh it was just great uh the music was a big part of 
I think not why I liked it, but it's just a big part of the overall, you know, thing that I really, really enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. Because, again, it's new music. um, But John Legend was one of the writers. Mm -hmm. Um, So it all was not like overly fanciful. You know what I mean? Like not that overly sugary Christmas. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was. Um, there was so much feeling to all of it. And again, this little girl who sings the, this great number, the square root of impossible is me. And it's the most, I mean, I, I would love to just tattoo the words of that song on my back or something. Cause it's like such a great, she's like, I'm not going to let any obstacle stand in my way. And Mm -hmm. she's just so. Um, it she her character is so great, and I I had talked about that in when I first talked about it because like there was that one moment where the l- other little boy is like, "What makes you think you can yeah. do this?" You know, and she's like, "Because there's nothing that says I can't." And she has that attitude, and and um, again, I had said before, it's such a great movie for girls to see because the girls in this movie are so smart, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. and. I I love just to see that, you know, it's it's just a great thing to see them take control and kind of have this ability to to make things. And yeah, Forrest Whitaker is the main character and he's the inventor. He's the genius. But the women in this movie are everything else. They're the glue and they're the drivers and they're the they're the force, you know, behind everything. Really, if it wasn't for them, he'd be a very quiet Right, but his daughter and granddaughter are just as smart. The The main yeah. invention at the end, Buddy, his daughter actually invented. That was in her journal. And he just he just made it work, mm-hmm. you know, and put the pieces together. And the granddaughter, again, shows up and she's super smart mm-hmm. and can do all of the um, yes. math and everything. So, yeah, it's it's just a fun movie that I'm not only going to watch at Christmas. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean it's it happens at Christmas because that's the event that kind of brings them together. But it's uh, it's for all any period, any time. Yeah, and I think they should. Uh, there's been talk of them bringing it to um, a stage show of some sh- sort, and you know, again, it it could be amazing on stage uh, with the things that they could do. It would. I imagine it would be very expensive. Yeah. To do it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, but. But yeah, it was very it, it was very well done and very uh easy and fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's Jingle Jangle on Netflix. Yep. Um if you didn't get a chance to see it this season, again, it doesn't matter that it's Christmas or it's past or whatever. Definitely go and check it out. Um and it's a family movie. Everyone of every age should like it and be able to um relate to the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, for totally. Sure. And you'll love the music. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. The next movie we watched was a pay-per-view movie, and that is The Crudes, A New Age. This is the sequel to the original The Crudes. Um, We should probably state that you never saw the original. I did not. So um, your opinion will be based on this alone and not really having a relationship with the family going into it. Um, I've stated, I, th- oh, I don't even remember, but the first one I really did enjoy. Um, the first one had a lot of feels. I was definitely crying at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, it felt a lot more, um, dedicated to the crudes. Um, this, so this sequel, the crudes are still going around trying to find a place for them to call home. Um, along with Guy, who is Ryan Reynolds' character, and they come across this wonderful home and house and gardens and everything, and it turns out the Bettermans live there. And Guy grew up with them. They're old family friends. Right. And they have evolved to a whole nother level. Obviously, we started with the Crudes. Guy had this whole other evolution of his own, and now the Bettermans have evolved to where they have running water and they garden and um they are just a whole new level a a very modern home for the time yes yeah um and the crudes obviously can't 
really adjust and and there's this whole other you know the bettermans want guy to stay with them and the crudes want guy to go with them and you know all that sort of stuff there's kind of a whole bunch of little stories in there Mm -hmm. um and a whole other weird thing with these (laughs) what were they called the hammer monkeys hammer monkeys punch monkeys punch monkeys sorry um a whole nother story with them so anyway I'll just say first, I did not like this as much as the first one. Okay. I, there were aspects of it. I loved introducing a new new characters. I, I really liked that. Um, that was fun to see the crudes having to interact with a whole nother level, you mm-hmm. know, like, the, like walls. They kept punching through the walls. They didn't understand what walls were, you mm-hmm. know, that's funny. Um, but there wasn't the emotion there that I felt with the first one. And I don't know what that was. And so it kind of kept going on. And I was like, when are we going to get to that heart tugging thing that I, that I felt so much in the first one. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel it come around. Um, So that was a little weird. Okay. And the whole thing at the end with the punch monkeys and then like the, you know, I lo- kind of love the grandmother and she had this those fire sisters or whatever they were. And that was funny. But again, I didn't it just felt like no one really knew what story they wanted to tell. And yeah. so they kind of went off on this thing instead of focusing on the people, yeah. really. Um, so, you know, it, it was entertaining. I didn't like want to turn it off or anything. You know, it was entertaining. Um I just felt like there could have been uh, more to it. I don't really know how to say it. So that's kind of my deal. I I think if your kids love the first one, they'll like this one and they aren't going to be looking for that sort of thing. You know, they're not going to be like, Oh, I need more emotion. Um, So I'm sure as a family, you can watch it and enjoy it. But uh, I just wanted, I wanted a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, I, as you said, I didn't see the first one, so I have nothing to compare it to. Um, but I have to believe anybody who saw the first one, like the first one is going to be disappointed by this one. Um, it just, you know, the first yeah. one we were, we were, we were on such a journey with the crudes cause they were learning so much from guy and they came out of their cave and they were learning the world and all of that. And I felt like I wanted a little bit more. And instead it was like the crudes were so against learning anything from the bettermans. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of annoying. And then even at the end, it was more like the bettermans had to become more like the crudes for everyone to get along, Mm -hmm. which is, again, against evolution. (laughs) You know, so it was like it just was I just didn't know. I didn't know what the point was. It was I I didn't learn anything and I don't feel like any of the characters learned anything either. Yeah, it was a hot mess. The, the movie was. It really was. It was visually. It was fun to watch. It's fun. Yeah, uh, there's like, fun little jokes and stuff. <clears throat> I like all the people who who voiced the characters. Yeah. Um, but there was, at the same time, there was so much, so many different little storylines, so many different little things going on. Yet overall, it felt a little bit pointless. Yeah. That, that's yeah exactly. That it was. It was. It was always a. It was a constant for me that. You know, I was just constantly thinking to myself, what what exactly am I watching here? Because yeah. it was fun to watch. It was well drawn and well animated and, <laughs> and, you know, action, I guess, and and stuff. But it didn't know what it wanted to be. And what what Yeah. What were they supposed to learn or what were we what were we supposed to learn or any of that? It, yeah. yeah, there wasn't. Um, I had, of the, course, by the end, everyone just gets along. But it's kind of like, why did that happen? Yeah, I think I would have the same feeling now as a fifty-two-year-old man if I sat down and watched a, a SpongeBob episode. I would have the same feeling. That's a, that's what I imagine. Where there's just there's stuff going on and it's keeping kids entertained. But what is it? What's the point? What's what's really happening? Well, and, you know, it just. Again, and we'll get into another sequel that we watched, you know, and and it's it's hard to um, it's hard to come up with that second story. And I feel like it was getting somewhere. Having the whole Betterman thing was a good idea, Mm -hmm. but then they didn't know how to extend that conflict enough. So they brought in this whole punch monkey thing and it was like it just derailed everything. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I totally agree. So, yeah, you know, uh, so again, as a family for kids, it's fine. They'll enjoy it. I think we're looking looking for too much, <laughs> probably, but you know, it's fine. Well, and and you know, when it comes to animated movies, we're we're used to watching Pixar. Well, we're getting to that next, so yeah. yeah. So um, there's just a, a a bit of a difference. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <coughs> um, yeah, so that's the Crude's a New Age. It's on pay per view. Um, I know. I wouldn't rate it very high. Me personally. It de- yeah, it depends. If you've got a family and you've got small kids, they're not going to care. They're going to love those punch muggies. So, you know, who cares? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I guess I'd spend the, what, 20 bucks on yeah, it? Yeah, for sure. Because mm. I think a lot of people with kids would have taken them to the theater. So I guess um, this is a lot cheaper and, you know, they'll enjoy it. So, yeah. But moving on okay. to... Um, a Pixar movie that be- came out. A better movie. And is on Disney Plus, And this is called Soul. Um, starring Jamie Foxx and Tina Fey. Um, yeah. I mean, you, you can... Uh, I... Thinking, thinking, thinking. Can't go wrong with a Pixar movie. Nope. Now, I... The only one I have in my existence turned off is The Good Dinosaur. And that's not because it was bad. It was because... I was overwhelmed with sadness when he lost his family. I could not take it. So mm-hmm. um, that's just me. I, I I don't like watching even animated animals in peril. Um, and that <laughs> dinosaur was so sad. It killed me. So um, I think I only got mm-hmm. 15, 20 minutes into it and I had to turn it off. But that is not Pixar's fault. That is me personally. Sure. Um, so the point of soul is... Um, Joe Mm -hmm. is a music band teacher. He loves jazz and he's always had this dream of being a jazz professional jazz musician. Um, He finally gets a call to audition and he gets the gig super excited. And I guess spoilers, even though there was still so much of a twist in this movie that I wasn't, I was surprised um, Hmm. from the trailer. So he, he falls into a a street grate. Yeah. And um his soul is sent off to the great beyond, but it turns out that he's actually like in a coma in a hospital. He's not dead. And so he kind of learns how everything happens, how soulmates happen and and uh how people get their personalities and he mm-hmm. he learns all of this stuff from the great before. Um and the story goes from there. I don't know how much I want to give, but if I'm going to give my real opinion, I have to really talk about it. I would talk about it. And yeah. Just, so, if you haven't, so spoiler, there are going to be spoilers here. And if you haven't seen it, skip ahead, skip ahead, because we recommend very highly that you, that you see this. Yes. <clears throat> so this movie at first, um, I have to say when I first finished it, I wasn't sure what I thought because I wasn't hit over the head with emotions like I am with others. And it's taken, I have thought about it. It has not left my brain and I have thought about it for days and now I'm going to probably watch it on a loop a lot this week. Um, (laughs) Okay. So here's, here's how I interpreted things. And, you know, obviously let's discuss Um, Joe, he's you know a middle-aged man from what i can tell i don't think he's like in his 20s you know he's got gray hair so he's in 40s or 50s yeah and he's made he's gotten by by teaching this thing and when he first gets to the great before and then he meets soul 22 who is tina fey and she refuses to go to earth she's it's super funny. She's just like, you know, everything down there is crazy. I have no desire to go down there. She's gone through thousands and thousands of mentors, everyone from Gandhi to what? Oh, I was just going to say the souls were created in order, in numerical order, and they're on billions and billions of souls, and they're still soul number 22 hanging who, out. Yeah. Who so that tells gone. you. Yeah. And all these mentors that are supposed to help her find her spark, which is the thing that gets you prepared and makes you want to go to earth and and Mm -hmm. live in a body. Um, 
she's never found her spark and she doesn't want to go to earth. And so all these mentors have always just given up on her. Um, so when he goes and he starts talking to her about his, you know, his life and she's me like, your life is lame. And she's looking at his life and Mm -hmm. you know how boring it is and blah, blah, blah. And at first, you know, he's kind of like, no, you know, he thinks he's fine. He just wants to get back to his life because now he's got this big break coming up. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of stuff goes on in the middle. There's a lot of, you know, all this other stuff that goes on in the middle. But my big thing is um, there's a few. And honestly, I don't know that I want to go on forever about this movie. I just want to say go watch it. Mm -hmm. But because I think I think it's a lot of um, I think it's a very personal thing. I think what people get out of it is going to be a different a different feeling to each of us. It's going to make everybody think about their life for sure. Um, You know, he finally has that whole flashback of his of his life Mm -hmm. and recognizes that it wasn't lame and it wasn't boring and he loved every moment of it whatever moment it was and um but he may not have been enjoying it like he should have does that make does that relate to you like there there were all these moments that he goes through in remembering and then all of a sudden it's like you know then he's like well whatever i do from here on out I'm going to love every minute of it. Yeah. Um, and I think that says a lot for all of us because we do. We just go through the motions every single mm-hmm. day waiting for the big moment. Mm-hmm. And then we love those big moments and we're so happy about those big moments. And again, if nothing has taught us anything and this movie maybe is perfect for this year that we've all been inside and we've had to have not any big moments for mm-hmm. those of us being responsible. Um, we've had to sit in this day-to-day thing but also at least for me i've sat and learned to love what's happening and i think that's what he went through does that make sense well it makes sense to me i don't think i'm describing it well well. it makes sense to me because i watched it with you and i i understand exactly what you're saying it's hard to because again i think it's very personal and then and then number 22 has her whole reckoning and and there's a it's a killer moment when she's a lot she becomes this lost soul and all of her mentors i don't know if i can do this without crying all of her mentors are in her head and how all the horrible things they've said to her um are just playing over and over and she Mm -hmm. can't get out of that loop Mm -hmm. she can't get out of all these horrible things that they've said over these Mm -hmm. however long it's been and uh she again without finding her spark um until joe reminds her of that and the thing is that i also loved is that you know he thought finding your spark was the thing you're born to do so like he thought he was born to play jazz and Mm -hmm. you know and i think a lot of people think that um finding your spark is that one thing and really it's not it's just uh it can be a very tiny it, moment yeah, that it, makes it all worthwhile right it, it can be a, a small almost singular connection just one time right that can be your spark that that sends you on your way right. effectively right yeah yeah it's so hard to describe it really is um i got a i i got a, i have a i agree with everything you say and i understand why you say it <laughs> but i have a, a i don't think anything i said made sense and I'm well sorry. it did because i watched it you know I watched the same movie at the same time and I and we we chatted ever so slightly about it. Yeah. Um I had a slightly different take on his retrospective. Okay. Um in that I think him going back through his life, he really it really hit him all the missed opportunities yeah. he had for connections with with yeah. people or different things and he really, you know, it it really impacted him, and he made the decision: if I ever get back, right, I'm gonna lo- love. Every, uh, I'm gonna, you know, love every second. Open of up it. a little bit more, and and yeah. and I think that, I think that may have been his spark. Yes, I agree with you there. I fully agree with you. And it, and actually, yesterday I put it on again yesterday, hmm. and I kind of fell asleep in and out <laughs> just because I took Benadryl, and hmm. um. 
But there were a couple things that really stood out to me in the second viewing. One is when he got the call to go audition for Dorothea Williams. He says, oh, my God, if I could play for her, I could die happy. Mm -hmm. And then secondly is when he gets the gig and he's standing outside with Dorothea Williams. And he says, I've waited all my life for this day. And I thought I would feel differently. You mm-hmm. know, and she's and she says to him, um, oh, what is it? She says she says, you know, I, I once knew a fish who was swimming around in the ocean and he and he stopped and said, I'm looking for the ocean. And I said, you know, you're here. You're in the ocean. And the fish says, no, this is water. I want the ocean. And it's like this little metaphor thing mm-hmm. that, again, I think every person will take differently and interpret into their own world. Right. But what I loved was. He's thinking, oh, I could die happy if I could play for her. Then he gets the gig and he's like, that's that's this isn't making me as happy as I thought it was going to be. And God, if Pixar doesn't make these little moments where it's so true, you know, Mm -hmm. you can't live for one moment. Mm -hmm. We have to live every day and um, the big and the small. And, you know, you you don't know what's going to make you happy really right we can make up things and then it ends up being disappointing or whatever it is and oh there's just so many layers and so many things to this and i i am so happy to watch it over and over again because i think um gosh there's so many lessons and and wonderful um little bits yeah i don't i don't think pixar has made a deeper movie um see i'm always gonna argue with inside out because to me it that was that was that's my favorite pixar so i'm always gonna say to me that's deeper i understand Um, and and i'm i'm not gonna put the two against each other but they feel like they go together well because this is like you know and someone actually was like oh is 22 does 22 become riley you know and it's like i can't i can't (laughs) do all that right now Wow. But hmm. it kind of comes together, right? This is before and then you have your personalities when you're a human and, you know, but um yeah, I don't know. Sure. The, I mean The only thing I kind of wish and this is just me because of my state of mind right now is, you know, they had all the souls and they're like, oh, "Here, you five are going to go in and you're going to be, you know, whatever it was." Yeah. You're going to have this ang- you know this kind of personality and then you're gonna yeah. go in there you're gonna have that kind of personality um i kind of wish they had had a little bit of like some neurodiversity things shown in there for some reason i don't i think that was just that's just me but you know kind of going to show you're gonna have anxiety and you're gonna have you know, sure <laughs> like i don't know it just you know it felt like a little uh, just a little bit that that could have been in there for those of us that um you know yeah have that in us yeah right? yeah yeah <laughs> i mean it was a very so here's what i think it was an incredibly complex movie yes so they had to simplify as much as possible yeah. which yeah. was which again i think is why multiple viewings because i think there probably are so many things i missed mm-hmm. Um, yeah. but yes, trying to <clears throat> simplify how a person becomes a person, you know, which right. isn't true, but you know what I mean? Sure. Um, just, yeah, but lovely and music well, because uh, of the yeah. jazz background, yeah. Yeah. um, lovely music. Um, the way New York looks, um, was kind of amazing. Um, yeah, the, and and the way the grape before looks was just lovely. Oh yeah, I mean you know it, the, uh, if you if you yeah when you see this it's going to be there are a lot of huge contrasts in this yeah. movie. The the great before you know you never see the great beyond, but you see a lot of the great before, and it's very abstract and really actually very well done. Yeah, I mean really well done. Um. And you have the whole vibrant New York thing, which mm-hmm. the animation, it almost looks like it's just... Yeah, real. Just filmed. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and, but then the abstractness of the of the great before is just... It's it's really gorgeous. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Um, 
lots of color in throughout the whole movie. So I picked Jingle Jangle as my favorite of everything we watched, but it was very close between that and this. Yeah. This is a very good, good movie, and I will watch it yeah. many, many times. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. There's a lot... and. To to watch, I think I think if you have kids after I don't know a certain age or something, there's a lot to discuss with them mm-hmm. um, because you could get them thinking about enjoying every day versus looking forward to college or looking forward to getting a job mm-hmm. or whatever you know, um, you know there's there's something in an everyday um, world that we all need to kind of stop yeah. and enjoy. And what I think they did such a great job at with this movie is they give you so much to think about. Um, there's an awful lot to take away from this movie uh, without hitting you in the face and saying, hey, we're trying to get you to think about <laughs> right, these things. Right. It's a very entertaining movie. Yeah. You know, it's not a an in your face you know no think no, about this stuff. No. It's it's just it seeps into you. It's very subtle. Yeah. You're you're in in investing in the character, you just naturally go through these things. Yep. And then after the movie's over, you're really going to go through those things. Right. And exactly. It's just, it's really well done. It's, it's kind of genius. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. I again, mean, hats off to Pixar. For sure. It's yeah. wonderful. They and, nailed another one. And it's the first black lead in a mm-hmm. Pixar film, mm-hmm. and um, which Jamie Foxx was great. Yeah. He, he was a, a really good choice for that. It's, yeah. 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 So that's Soul. You can mm-hmm. watch it on Disney Plus. Um, I think it says something weird, like it's only going to be streaming till the end of January or something, which I don't understand. So I don't know if they're going to then like put it on pay per view for a while for other people to mm. see. I don't know. I don't. I really don't understand the whole deal. But it's on Disney Plus right now, so watch it as many times yeah. as you can. If <laughs> and if you don't have Disney Plus, you should get. Yeah, it. Yeah, it's wonderful. You know, we're we're. This show is a fan of Disney Plus. Um, yes. We watch a lot of stuff on there and yes. we highly recommend. I think it's six ninety nine a month or something. I don't even know. Yeah. You won't. Yeah. It, it, it's money well spent. It's. Yeah. I think we paid lot. for three years up front. So. Yeah. I, I don't even know. But. Yep. Okay. So I'll go watch it. <laughs> yep. Next new movie we watched that came out Christmas Day is Wonder Woman 1984. Um. This is obviously the sequel to Wonder Woman. Um, this is on HBO Max. It's also in theaters. Um, I actually saw some people who went to theaters to watch it. So mm, shame on them, but okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think most people know I'm not a fan of the DC Comics movies. Um, I would say out of all of them, the original Wonder Woman was the best and my favorite. Um this one um is not as good as the first one which is also which is very strange i usually love the second movies especially when it comes to um characters like this you know i usually love the second one way better because we don't have to deal with the origin story we already know the characters and so we can jump right in the problem with this one is the villain was dumb um which is typical you know and the the story just didn't i just didn't care you know and man i thought cheetah was gonna be a way bigger villain and she turned out to be that side villain like like you know when they stick the, the penguin and the villain you know brief henchman or something yeah, it, yeah. It, i was shocked at how small Kristen wigg's part really ended up being um and so anyway um uh, i don't know what to say you know i loved the 80s vibe i did Mm -hmm. um the whole weird thing of chris pine coming back was just as weird as i thought it was going to be you know when we started it remember i said i can't wait to find out how they explain chris pine coming back (laughs) and so the whole point of the movie (laughs) is there's this wish stone and that's basically what happened was Diana Prince was holding it and she obviously wished for Steve to come back because she's been pining for 40 years. No pun intended. And oh, yes, good, good, good one. And um, no pine intended. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so he comes back, but it's not really him because, of course, he did. And so he's in this other guy's body. But she says, you know, um, 
all I see is you. So then that's all we see is Chris Pine, even though the other guy was like six inches taller. But, you know, yeah, whatever. You know, so, you know, it I, it just felt it just, you know, I don't even know how to say anything because it's good. I don't understand the whole opening of the movie where she's the little girl and she's like in that whole contest thing. I don't know what that had to do with anything else in the movie. It it didn't. Yeah. So it was like, I kept expecting it to come back. Like, you know, she lost. She was told she lost. <sighs> you know, mm. did I cry? At, like, again, spoilers if you haven't watched it. But, you know, when she has to say goodbye to Steve again, um, very sad. It feels like it's a take. <sighs> Not a take, because, again, you know, it's all going on at the same time. But... It feels like it tries to pull the same feelings out of me as Steve Rogers and Peggy and, you know, their whole love story. It started in the 40s and then he got frozen and, you know, and he loved her all his life. And then finally in Endgame, we find out he went back and he lived his life with her. That love story is so like, oh, and wonderful and amazing. I don't. I don't feel that for them. <laughs> you know, I'm like, mm -hmm. I love them in the first movie. Yes. When he died horrible and, you know, and then she found all her powers because she found this huge love and all that. Okay. You know, but in this one, it was just like, I feel bad for her, but hello, you could go find anyone else you wanted to. Like, it just feels weird that she's literally choosing never to love anyone else again when she had never seen a man in her life until she saw him so it's kind of like e i don't know it's very like they're trying too hard for that relationship to be something because again you can't bring them back in the third one can you they might but at I some point you know and then i mean this dude from the 40s gets into a fighter jet thing and just knows how to fly figures it figures it out on the fly yeah no pun intended. never heard any sort of engine seen an engine like that ever mm -hmm. and decides to drive it to fly it into fireworks which seems very stupid i, I, don't know. I love the invisible invisible jet thing that they made that work mm -hmm. um i love her she's wonderful Kristen wig was wonderful um the mandalorian was great you know i have no <laughs> I have no complaints of his. Um, he was great. It was just a, to me, it was a silly villain story with this wish stone. And I didn't enjoy that. Yeah. And it was two and a half hours long. Yep. It could have easily been 90 minutes. Oh, it could have been shorter than that. <laughs> so here's, I don't. Uh, and here's I, the thing. I <clears> feel <throat> bad because I love, I love what they're doing with these movies. The first one again. Loved seeing her kick butt. Love Patty Jenkins doing these movies. So it's like I feel bad saying it's not enjoyable. But it just, it to me, it is. It's a DC thing. It's just kind of like I uh, want to be depressing and sad uh, instead of uplifting and fun and colorful and, you know. That's what you want out of a DC movie? That's what I get out of Marvel movies. I get fun and heroic and colorful and, you yeah. know, strong and all that stuff. And DC is always sad. Right. It's okay. It's sad okay. Now, child now sitting in the <laughs> lunchroom by themselves. Like, you know. It's the kid in the hallway who's always crying gets in the rain. Books knocked out of his hands. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I certainly understand what you're saying. Uh, I'm go I'll talk about this for just. A minute. Yeah, sorry, I went too long. Because I, well, you know, and you know, to get things rolling again, but also I don't have much nice to say about this movie. <laughs> and you like the first one? I did. Yeah. And I love her. Yeah. Uh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Hollywood, please, for the love of God, <laughs> listen to me here. Oh, God. <laughs> you don't have to make a movie two and a half hours long for us to feel like we're getting our money's worth. Make a good movie True. Yeah. at an hour and no. I'll f <laughs> just hear me out. No. Fine. Whatever the time is. I, I will gladly take a good least. movie, however long it is, versus artificially extended just to give us more time. I mean, that 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 was 
borderline ridiculous to have a movie that long be that just for that. Like that whole opening scene that took 10 minutes. Yeah. And then it had nothing. And to it do had with no anything. relation to anything else ever in the rest of the movie. Yeah. I mean, it was it was visually neat. Right. I mean, it was epic at some right. shots. But we've already seen her as a kid. We've seen her with all those women. <clears throat> we've seen her, you know, get her crap together on, you know what I mean? Like we saw all that. Like, why did we go back? It mm-hmm. didn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't make any sense to me. It did not make any sense. I don't know why we decided to do this in the 80s. <clears throat> I guess because we're just going to kind of, we'll eventually well, get to where she's in, in today's world. I think there was um, a bigger impact with the nuclear weapons and that sort of thing because that's when that stuff was actually going on. Yeah. So I, I don't have a problem with that. It's just the story was just so weak. And yeah. and the, the, the villain, they... I don't know what they were doing with him. I, they were, tra- I think, so it's a comic book, right? Mm-hmm. So you go into it willing to suspend belief to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. But they like tried to make it so believable and so human that it was unbelievable that it, that these things it was just, could even again, happen or would happen like, even in a comic book. Give me a good villain. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, <sighs> yeah, like, it just was the smarmy, you know, Ponzi scheme guy. Like, yeah. no, give me a good villain that wants to rule the world with something better than a weird stone that looked Phallic? not right. Yeah. <laughs> I just, it was just, because uh, I really, like, I want to I wanna hate the person so that I can really root for the good people. Yeah. And I was just kind of sitting there going, oh, his eye looks really gross, and he's annoying, and this poor kid, and, like, I just, Well, that you whole know. thing, I mean, <sighs> yeah. It, it made me dislike, so this villain was done, in my in my estimation, this is just my opinion, done so poorly, I don't like this guy. Oh. And I've never seen him, I know he's the Mandalorian, yeah. and fantastic for him. But it's going to take me a little while to get past this for him, <laughs> you know, because he was he was like this villain could have easily been named King Douche or something <laughs> like that because he was just this. Well, and why didn't we just do Cheetah as the villain? Because she was cool. Like she, you know, figuring out she was getting her strength. She was getting all this stuff. And like that. Before she became the actual cheetah, which again, it was gross. Like that CGI fur and stuff was really weird. And but but the fact <laughs> that she got so strong that it was a actual an actual fight for Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. like that was cool. Mm-hmm. We could have done a lot. It feels like with yeah. those two going at it, and maybe you know, again, she would have been. They both would have been working together and. Barbara could have been doing things behind her back. Like there could have been way more of a story that I cared about with the two of them than bringing in this guy that was doing weird stuff. Which leads me to believe that the creative team behind this movie, it got to a certain point where they couldn't turn back and they just had to keep going with how they originally started, but then had some ideas and incorporated those. But it ended up being this weird mishmash of villain well, and I don't know if this is from a book. I don't know if the Wishstone and this guy, um, oh, Max this, Gold, or, you know, Max this, whatever his name is. Like, I don't know if that's from a book. I'm sure it is. And so they, you know, they take these uh, stories from the books and, you know, they don't make the stuff up just for movies. So um, I'm sure this was part of one of the books and they took it and ran with it and decided to throw Cheetah in on the side and... You know, I just, it wasn't at all what I was expecting. I was yeah. really expecting a lot, a lot more. Unless they really damaged the story and mishandled every step of it. That had to have been an awful comic. If this is from a comic book. It, there's, <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, I do. That's my opinion. Yeah. So, anyway, Wonder Woman 1984, I don't know. Like, I feel like, you know, if you are going to watch the third one, you got to come in and watch this one. But you know just go into it knowing that it's pretty much like any other dc movie um and you just got to get through it yeah and dc has already said this was such a hit they're doing another one yeah which i, I don't know what I time no frame with. i'll give it a shot you know i guess well, i'm just one of those people yeah but i i don't know if they understand what a hit is 
because well, their movies are hits. It's just they're not um, they're not as big a hits, and they're not, and you know, other than Christopher Nolan stuff, they haven't been good so far. So you know, uh, I appreciate your sentiment that you're trying to help them out, but I don't understand what they're thinking. I'll watch the next the next one. Make money. That's all. Well, that's what it seems like, and yeah. which is fine, but. But, you know, at some I point... I hope they'll bring it back and it'll be better. You know, I really do. Because it is the one that I like. I don't, you know, I don't need to see well, Aquaman. I don't need to see... Yeah. I don't. I definitely don't need the movie version of The Flash. Um, you know, so it, it's... I, I, I want the Wonder Woman ones to be good. First one was great. This one, not really. So, you know, maybe the third one will come back and we'll be stronger yeah. and, you know... I, I think Patty Jenkins is capable of so much more than certainly this movie and hopefully even the first movie. Oh, but and be sure to um, go past the credits and watch a little scene after the credits. Yeah. Which that maybe is the tie in. So now that I'm thinking about it, the whole beginning scene is, you know, the whole Asteria gold thing that Wonder Woman goes back and has to put on. Which doesn't make any sense. She's Wonder Woman. But, you know, maybe that's the whole reason for that beginning scene is so that when she goes and puts Asteria's medal on, you know, and suit on, it, we're like, oh, that's from when she was a kid and that was what they were all going for was that prize. So I guess that's why that beginning scene is there. Anyway. <laughs> I don't have anything to say to that. Okay. Wonder Woman 1984 on HBO Max and in theaters. <clears throat> watch it if you must. Yeah. Next week I'm going to talk about You Did Not Watch. I watched this one on my own. Okay. This is on Amazon Prime called Sylvie's Love. Yep. This stars Tessa Thompson and the football player. Namdi Asamoah? Yeah. Okay. I had never seen him before. So Carrie <clears throat> Washington's husband. Yeah, which I also didn't know. John told me. Um, so I was super excited to watch this. Um, the previews was all like, you know, it's set in the 50s and 60s. And Tessa Thompson is, you know, she's she's like dating and ha then gets married and all that stuff. But the, the flip side in the trailer was she loves television and she eventually becomes a television producer and all this stuff. And so I was like, Oh, well, Holy crap. I got to watch this movie. That sounds amazing. And, um, the movie was not as amazing as I wanted it to be. It was, a, it was pretty disjointed. Um, but here's what I will say. Tessa Thompson is fantastic i love her so much i've loved her in everything i've seen her in valkyrie you know from thor ragnarok oh yeah. okay yeah um and she's in the latest international men in black international whatever anyway she's great she's so good in this so good in this that that kept me watching because i loved her so much in this mm -hmm. this namdi asama he i had never seen him in anything before he's been in a bunch of stuff but i didn't know that um really really enjoyed him in this everyone in it was really good um but the story itself was disjointed it's like she falls in love with him um but she was engaged at the time and and so then she gets married and has this kid who turns out was originally the first guys she loves tv like early on it's all she does is watch tv then she gets a job and she eventually does become a producer's assistant and does become a producer but it is a very second or third story you know a b or c story line like it's mm. not it's not really a big deal because even when i saw the trailer i was like oh sylvie's love maybe it's her love for television that takes over her love for these men and whatever um and she loves her job and you know through she divorces the first guy then comes back with or divorces the second guy and comes back with robert the original guy and all this stuff but it's like it's a it's oh no uh oh so it it just it was very much like it's called sylvie's love what was really her love you know was mm -hmm. it her daughter was it her the first guy was it her love of tv it just felt like nothing was really hit on strongly enough for me to be like oh i get the point of this you know mm, yeah. and, then, and then when it was over i was like huh yeah. that really just happened so anyway <clears throat> it's i i feel like i want to tell people to watch it for the performances because really they were that good um but 
it's not going to really get you anywhere as far yeah. as the story goes. It mm. was a good idea, but I just, I wanted more of something to really show this is a big deal, mm-hmm. you know? And again, um, all black characters, but not about a struggle, which I love, you know, it was not about any, of uh, any sort of struggle. It was just a story that we would watch any other actors doing, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So mm-hmm. it was like, that's also really refreshing. Kind of the same thing in Jingle Jangle, you know, where we're getting these black stories coming out where it doesn't have to be about the struggle. And mm-hmm. while that's also important because the struggle is real, um, it's also nice to just watch a movie where that that's not the point of the movie. The point mm-hmm. of the movie is just living a life and falling in love and having children and having a job and, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, so kind of love that too Mm -hmm. so that's sylvie's love on amazon prime sure okay all right last movie we're going to talk about and i'm not going to spend much time on it i i don't think i am (laughs) because there's only one left and i didn't well um so this is on pay-per-view and this is george clooney's new movie the midnight sky wait is it pay-per-view no it was netflix oh it was netflix never mind um called the midnight sky george clooney directed he stars in it um I did not like it at all. Yeah, it was it was actually very disappointing. Very disappointing. This was two hours long. Yeah. And again, this one I can literally <clears throat> blame on him because he directed it. And there were shots that were taking 10 seconds for no reason. It could mm-hmm. have been a second long mm-hmm. and move on. And yeah. so when you add up 10 or 15 or 20 second shots, we're at two hours for no reason other than you wanted me to stare at a sink for 10 seconds like i yeah. that's that's on him um the telling of the story you know to me it was predictable and yeah. and and here's my biggest gripe so the point of the story is something's happened where george Clooney is the last man on earth and he's trying to um contact a space crew that's been out to jupiter's moon because they think that's the next place to go and live and he wants to warn them so that they don't come back to Earth because they won't survive if they come back. That's it. They never tell us what actually happened on Earth, right. which annoys the poop out of me. Like, <laughs> you need to tell me that. I don't know why that has to be some kind of mystery and who really cares. And the, Obviously, there's some sort of radiation event or something. You have to assume it's a bunch of wayward nukes. They knew it was coming. Because in the beginning, we see everyone's planning to go home because a week later, something's going to happen. So it was coming. They knew it was happening. Um, but just tell us. What, mm. what, what is it? What's the harm in that? Like, I don't know. There's no artsy thing to not telling us that. Right. Um, you know, he's dying of something. Again, they don't really tell us that. Weird. Like, I don't know what the mysteries are in that. Mm-hmm. Um and then the big mystery is like really obvious throughout the whole thing i felt um so i don't know i just felt it was boring as all get out like i just was bored bored and bored yeah the the pace wasn't good um i kind of figured it out very early on i mean like very early on mm-hmm. um he he was going through the crew you know going through pictures yep. of the crew yep. and stopped on her yep and I looked at her and this little girl, and I'm like, well, that's obviously the same person. Right. They just look like, I mean, it was great casting. Yeah, that girl's adorable. 100%. But, you know, and then several things happen along the way. It's like, well, that's pretty improbable, but, you know. Yeah. It, would, it works if she's not, if she's made up. But it's like the whole, Spoiler, you know. Spoiler, sorry. Yeah. But it's that same story of just, you know, Cat in the Cradle like he pursued his career instead of taking care of his kid. And then at the end of life, you feel bad that you did, you know, uh, <laughs> I just, it, yeah. and you think now there's two people that are going out to Jupiter and they, she's pregnant. How, how do they survive and how does life continue on? Yeah. That just seems weird. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know. This was based on a book. Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah there's not much else to say other than you know we're th- we're big fans of george yes we are uh and that was a large part of the reason of watching this you know he directed it had a big hand in it he produced it um started it uh 
And I have normally liked everything he's directed. Leatherheads, I loved. Monuments Men, loved. You mm-hmm. know, when he directs funny stuff, I guess I love it. Not, not this. Yeah, this was a this was a huge miss. Yeah, like uh, all the way around, just every facet of it. Yeah, yeah, it's a bummer. Yeah, very much. So I, I even when there's nothing to gain from watching it, I would not recommend it. So, to yeah, me. I mean, if it was 15 minutes long, yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah. but it's two hours, and you will not, you'll never get that back. So right. make, make good choices. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to talk about one TV show I watched this weekend, um, and then we'll get to the Actors Corner. Um, So the new show on Netflix is called Bridgerton. Um, This is from Shonda Rhimes production company, Shondaland. Um, This was right up my alley. It's it's basically Gossip Girl set in the Regency era of England, which if you've listened at all, uh, the Regency era is my favorite. That's the whole Jane Austen era, the Mm -hmm. you know early 1800s in England. Um, So this was perfect for me i just love that so much but it was all gossipy you know like there's this lady whistledown who is writing a scan you know a scandal rag type thing um and no one knows who she is which is exactly gossip girl um and so she's telling all the secrets of society during the social um summer which is when all the women come out socially and that means they're ready to get married um so it takes place during this whole summer event we focus in on a couple families one is the bridgerton family there's another one the featheringtons um and who gets married and who's you know who's losing money or who's whatever scandals are going on um it's just awesome it was awesome i loved every second of it i couldn't stop watching it um, the main couple we kind of follow is between Daphne, who um, comes out during the social uh, season, and she ends up with this Duke, and they get married, and they're the couple that we follow. And oh my God, I loved their whole story. This Duke guy is so freaking hot. I couldn't stop watching because he was just so awesome, mm. and I loved watching every second of him. Um, yeah lots and you know shonda left um she she left abc her deal with them to come and make the deal with netflix because they wouldn't give her disney tickets so this was a good move for her because this show could not have been on are you confused she she made a major change like that because she couldn't get pretty much i think it was like the straw that broke the camel's back she had family in town and i guess when you're working for abc and working for disney you get so many passes a year and she needed some more and they refused her and she was like are you freaking kidding me you know i mean again that does seem ridiculous it's shonda rhymes look at what you've done for this company and this whole i mean come on and um they refused her and so she does say that that was kind of the breaking point and so she went and made her deal with netflix what a bunch of dopes yeah they're idiots <laughs> i mean that's stupid um so anyway this show could not have been on abc uh it could have it would have been a lot um it would have been different it would have been way different there's yeah. a lot of sex in it there's <sighs> a lot of scandalous it yeah but it's it works perfectly um and the episodes were literally right at an hour or a few minutes more than an hour so mm-hmm. You know, again, it would have had to been 44 minutes for television and all that. So you would have cut out a lot. There's only eight episodes, um, but it was just a lot of fun. And at the end, they kind of they kind of told us who Lady, Lady Whistledown was kind of. They kind of jumped ahead and gave us a little happy ending, almost like they aren't expecting to do a second season, mm-hmm. but they could easily come back and do a second season. And I really hope they do. I loved, I loved, loved, loved it. And I see that a lot of people are watching it. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of people who aren't familiar with the Regency era and aren't familiar with kind of all these rules and stuff that I just eat up. You know, I, it's such a <clears throat> horrible time for women, but God, I just, I don't know what it is about the romanticism yeah, of the whole thing. It's very confusing to it's me. It's very confusing to me. Trust me. Because it's like, ugh. Anyway. So, I know there's a lot of people watching this. Um, and so, hopefully, that'll mean that maybe there's going to be a second season. But it was very exciting to just kind of see her first. She didn't write it and, you know, do all that. But 
um, her company's first foray into Netflix was, uh-huh. was definitely a hit for sure. Cool. Yeah. So that's Bridgerton on Netflix. Definitely, definitely, definitely watch it. Okay. Um, so that's that. Now we can jump into the actor's corner Wow! and talk about Harrison Ford. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, I will just say not a huge fan of Harrison Ford's. Um, so this was pretty easy for me. And when you guys hear all the things I haven't seen of his, you'll be shocked. But it's just, it's just one of those yeah. things. So it turns out, I don't know that I'm a huge fan of his because when I think about my favorite actors, I don't really think about him. Right. But I have seen a lot that he's been in and liked it. Yeah. For him. So I guess I kind of have to He's one of those things that I feel like <clears throat> men love him. And yeah, he might not always come into your head, but man, when you watch him, like you love him. Yeah. Like, I think there's definitely some sort of male thing there. I don't know if it's the Indiana Jones thing or... Well, he's a... I think it's his his personality and his mannerisms. He's he's kind of a guy's guy in a lot of respects. Ugh, that earring. Not that I don't like oh, men in earrings. I do. But even, for him, it's always been like this. I don't even think about the earring. It's been odd on him. Anyway, okay. Movies you love. Six days, seven nights. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. Six days, seven nights. Yep. Um, I, you know, just that whole lost on a desert island thing. It's love it. Yep. Um, Star Wars. And thinking about it, I, I think the original. Uh, the very first. The, yeah. Yes. New uh, Hope. Episode four, which. Yeah, no. Just the first one. The very first one. Yeah. Star Wars. Yes. Yes. Okay. It is a new hope. Yeah. And it is number four in the yeah. timeline, which George Lucas really pisses me off and confused me <laughs> with all of that. But whatever. Um, And then The Fugitive. Yes, I have The Fugitive on my love list. That's mm-hmm. one that I I have to stop and watch. Mm-hmm. I just do. Yeah. It's so good. It's it's very compelling. It's For me, it's almost up there with Shawshank where, yeah, if it's on, I really feel the need. I have to stop and watch. To watch. And it's just, it's one of those mysteries that you can watch daily and mm-hmm. you're and it unfolds in such a great way mm-hmm. that it's just great storytelling yeah, it's period. so well done and the cat and mouse game between him and tommy lee is yeah just, you know it's perfect yeah it, it really is yeah yeah okay so i have the fugitive but my favorite of his air force one yeah i can that is one i can and have watched multiple days in a row mm-hmm. um even Which, to this day. Even to this day. Yeah. Yeah. I have to. I love it so much. Yeah. Again, it, great storytelling, great action. Yeah. Um God, Gary Oldman's so good. Yeah. Um, I cry every time. You know, it's just great. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, movies you like. Uh Air Force One. Okay. That was very near that could have been on my love list. A lot of these could have gone either way. Yeah. Right. So um uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. The first one. Yeah. Um, Clear and Present Danger. Okay. And, and Patriot Games. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah. Those, those I really liked. Okay. Well, none of the Jack Ryan ones I've seen, so, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And that's kind of interesting. Um, I'm not a fan. I guess, but <laughs> I would think you'd still like them. Cause they're, that's they're, what you say, but. They're really well done. I'm sure they are because the, you know, I love the john krasinski jack ryan I know. series but i just um yeah not my not my bag yeah especially at that time because that was like 90s right that's not what i was into when those came out so you know i don't know yeah but i think you could go back and watch them mm. and yeah okay i whatever. have no desire whatever yeah. whatever so my like is star wars period just him is han solo yeah. And all of them, and especially these last couple, well, the last one that he made it through. Um, yeah, just uh, not necessarily for him, but his Han Solo is iconic. Yeah, And uh, totally. I won't deny any of that. Right. So. That's it? That's it. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, movies you hate. So I don't have any movies of his that I actually hate mm-hmm. or even dislike. Okay. But there's one that I just don't have an interest in seeing. <laughs> okay. And that's his latest one, Call of the Wild. Oh, yeah. I will never see that. Yeah. yeah. Nothing think, with a dog. Yeah. So I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, But I feel like, you know, we've seen it. 
I don't. Yeah, yeah. nothing with a dog. Um, I do not have any that I hate. So moving yeah. on to secretly love. Morning glory. <laughs> I have that on mine too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The one with Diane Keaton as the main character. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> you knew I had to. Uh, with Rachel McAdams oh, as the main character. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Diane, um, she, Diane Keaton's in there somewhere. Yeah. I do watch that quite often because it's on one of the movie channels all the time. And mm -hmm. um, he's he's different in that one where he is like that gruff, but he's lovable, you know. So I really enjoy watching him even mm -hmm. in that movie. Um, so, yeah, I do like that one. Have you actually seen Six Days, Seven Nights? I believe I did when it first came out, yeah. Okay. But not not in its entirety since then. Hmm. Um, okay. Do you have any others under Secretly Love? No, that's it. Okay, so I have Morning Glory and I have <laughs> Sabrina. Sabrina with me is an absolute... Yeah, I haven't um, seen it. Him, Greg Kinnear. Yeah. Um, ugh, it's just... My sister and I, we quote quite a lot of lines from, from that movie. It's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And he's, again, gruff and then lovable. Um, gruff and lovable. Yeah. Those, um, those are my life goals. Okay. Embarrassed you haven't seen. Blade Runner. Yeah. So I know my cousin's listening and she's having a heart attack right now. But she knows I haven't seen it. Um, but that's like one of her favorite, favorite, favorite movies of yeah. all time. So, Courtney, I'm sorry, but neither one of us have seen it. Um and obviously haven't seen the follow up twenty forty nine or whatever it was. Right, um, but that's got Ryan Gosling in it. Yes, but I felt like if I haven't seen the first one, why would I watch the second one? Because I don't know what's going on. And you won't watch the second one. Well, you'll never see the second one because you won't go watch the first one. Right. It's not that I won't. I just have no desire. <laughs> okay. Semantics. Do you have any others under embarrassment? No. Oh, no. I have. I also added witness. And regarding Henry, because those are supposed to be great movies, and I never saw those either. So wow, okay. yeah, I I'm telling you, I just it's okay. Haven't seen a lot of his it's, stuff. It's okay, it's okay. We're all, we're you're, <laughs> you're safe here. <laughs> it's okay. And adding to your now, watch list. Next time you talk to Courtney, you might be yeah, yeah whatever. I, I don't know. know if you're safe there, but you're safe here. <laughs> um, adding my watch list, I didn't realize he was in Expendables three. Oh, I didn't either, yeah. So we've talked about we've those talked movies about before. Those. It's like a who's who of, I know. of, of classic 80s action, action guys. Yeah. yeah. So I really feel like... I we, we should do a marathon. We really just need yeah. to go watch those movies. Yeah. Because it, it, you know, every every so often I find out, wow, he's in it too. And yeah. That, that guy's in it too. And it's like, who isn't in those oh, movies now? So anyway, uh, I, I really think we should. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything to add to my watch list, but I do have honorable mentions. I didn't have any of the Raiders on my list. I'm not a huge, like, I. if I had to pick, I think Temple of Doom is probably my favorite. Um, you know, I'm not a huge, huge fan. Of course, I will, they're doing a fifth one now. I will definitely go see it for sure, but it's just, just doesn't make my list. Like, I definitely, I don't stop and watch it, mm -hmm. um, any of them if they're on, but every once in a while I will. So it's kind of that sort of thing. Um, Working Girl. Okay. Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, the Devil's Own with Brad Pitt. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. um, what Lies Beneath. You know mm -hmm. I watch that mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. I I just feel like that's such a clever movie. It it gets me every time. Yeah. Um, and Age of Adeline, which was a movie that just came out with Blake Lively like 10 years ago or something. And um, it was a really, really interesting movie. Yeah. Um, that I don't think people talk about enough. So I mm. just wanted to mention that. So okay, that's kind of my Harrison Ford deal. All right. Yeah. A little weird, but so we are going to get back on our normal now two week schedule. So we will be back in 2021 and that's it. And again, who knows? Cause there's not a lot coming out in the next couple of weeks. So, you know, but I'll try and find some stuff to okay. watch. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so we wish everyone a happy new year. Please stay home. Please um, be careful and just stay home. <laughs> wear, wear a mask. Wear a mask, but Wash your stay hands. home. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> wear a mask while staying home. That's... We don't have to go to that extreme. No, but... well, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> so there. But have a great happy new year. We're all looking forward yeah. to 2021 and uh, we will be back in two weeks. May all your dreams come true. Aw. 
in 2021. That's nice. Bye-bye, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> uh, until then, I'll be watching my stories. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, bye.